Alright, a pleasant day everybody. This is me again, your instructor for Practical Research 2, John Marvin Reganas. And in this video, in this instructional video, um, I'm going to be talking about how to write the following. The first one is theoretical background. The second one is your review of related literature and studies. Says medyo maduguto. Um, the third one is your concept conceptual framework. And the fourth one is your hypothesis. Alright, so let's get it moving. So the first one is the theoretical background, or otherwise known as the theoretical framework. So pwede siyang tawagin na background, pwede rin framework. Pero for uniformity, gagamitin natin yung term na theoretical background. So in this part of your paper, you explain the theories that support your research. It proves also that your paper is grounded on established idea. So um, maybe alam na siguro ng karamihan sa atin na meron ng mga theories na um, established ideas like cognitive theory, learning by doing theory, um, multiple intelligence theory. So marami ng mga ganyan. Tapos ang gagawin mo sa part na to sa paper mo is maghahanap ka ng theory na related at babakapan yung um, yung, ano mo, yung research mo. Okay, so there are parts of the theoretical background. Um, the first one is your introduction. The second one is the proponent and here. Ibig sabihin ng proponent, sino ba ang established? You know, sino ba ang, ang tao behind that theory? At yung year, um, kailan established yung theory? Tapos, my explanation of the theory. And the fourth one is, explain mo dito sa part na to, on how the theory is related to your study. Okay. So, may example dito. So, gaya ng previous um, parts, nag, nagbigay ako ng mga example. So, ito ay example na isang theoretical background of the study. So, the first one, we have the introduction. The study is anchored. So, meron yung mga phrases na the study is anchored. The study is... The study is supported by the theory and something like that. Um, so, so example dito is the study is anchored on the time perception theory. So this is the name of the theory. Um, the proponent is Gustav Theodor Fechner. And the year when the theory was established was in late 1900s. And pangalawang theory na ginamit niya is distraction conflict theory of Robert Zajong um, proponent. Si Robert at saka yung year when the theory was established is 1981. So, ayun. Dalawang theory ang ginamit niya. Now, question is, ilang theory ba ang gagamitin mo? So, most of the time, gagamitin, most of the time sa research is isang theory lang. But, mas maganda kung every variable ng um, study mo, ng research mo, is may nakabackup up na theory. So, may independent variable ka at may dependent variable so, yung dalawang variable mo, babakapan mo ng theory. For example, um, yung research title mo is Online Gaming and its Impact to Academic Performance. No? So, meron kang dalawang variable. First one is Online Gaming. Pangalawa is yung Academic Performance. So, paano ba maghahanap ng theory? Simple na simple lang, i-google mo. <laughs> So, ayan. So, ano yung first mo? So, um, type mo lang, theory on um, online gaming. Uh, Alright. So, ayan. So, maghanap ka, magbabasa ka. Ayan. Like example, oh, the, th uh, the study extends the theory of planned behavior. So, yung planned behavior, no? pwede mong i-click yan, babasahin mo. Ayan, babasahin mo yung theory na ganyan. Magbabasa ka lang. Magbabasa na magbabasa. Pwede rin pumunta ka sa um, scholar.google.com at magta-type ka ng theory on online gaming. Okay. So, ayan. Okay. So, babasahin mo lahat. No? Online, uh, maghahanap ka ano ba mga theory dyan. Okay. Maghahanap ka ng mga theory theory na related sa study mo at babakapan yung study mo. Tapos, pag nahalap mo na yung theory, ganito yung gagawin mo. Papakita mo yung proponent, yung year, kailan um, na-establish yung theory, at saka yung 
explanation ng theory. Uh, tungkol saan ba yung theory? Ano bang nakasaad sa theory? What is the theory all about? Tapos niyan is itong part na to, explanation on how the theory is related to the current study. So, i-explain mo. Gaya ng example na to. Okay. Ito yung explanation niya kung ano ba yung relation ng time perception theory sa kanyang current research. So, ito. This statement can be correlated, wrong grammar, to correlated to the excessive hours students spent in using computer where an individual will perceive that they are something like that. So, na-relate na yung theory niya sa current study niya. So, pangalawang theory niya is yung distraction conflict. Ganun pa rin. Na-explain niya dito. Tapos, i-relate niya naman kung paano siya um, paano siya kinamit sa kanyang research. So, by having theory or theories that supports or back, backs up your research, it makes your research more profound. It makes your research stronger kasi na-prove mo na there is an existing established idea that supports your research. So, yan yung importance ng theoretical background. Now, moving on to the review of related literature and studies. So, otherwise known as RRLS. Now, so, dalawa yan, literature and studies. So, in this part of your paper, ladies and gentlemen, maghahanap kayo ng mga related articles that talks about your topic and related studies that similarly talks about your research. So, ano ba ang difference ng literature? <laughs> Paano hirap bang i-pronounce? Literature, literature, <laughs> at ng studies. So, yung, yung literature, ladies and gentlemen, is any journals, articles, discussions, opinions, books, and etc. na related sa topic mo. Okay, related sa topic lang. No? Sa topic mo. At yung studies naman ay yung mga research na, yung mga published studies na, at mga thesis, no? na may relation tungkol sa iyong research problem or research title. Okay, again, yung literature, research topic. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng research topic? Example, online gaming and academic performance. So, lahat ng mga journals, articles, discussions na makikita nyo na related sa online gaming ay pwede nyo ilagay sa literature. So, yung studies naman, related sa research title. So, online akada oh, ano ba yun? Online gaming and academic performance. So, maghanap kayo ng similarly related na study na online gaming at academic performance relationship of both. So, maghanap kayo ng research, published studies, and thesis. Okay? So, medyo madugo-dugo to kasi in this part, you are required to have at least 15 sources or references or citations in your RRLS. So, at least 15. So, paano ba i-divide to? Yung literature, pag sinabi mong 15, limang literature lang, tapos sampung studies. Okay? So, counting literature lang kasi madali yung hanapin yung literature. Yung studies is more. No? So, around 30% is literature. Tapos, around 60% of your research or 70% um, of your research of your RRL consists of studies. Okay? So, ano ba yung common format? So, may dalawang common format na ipapafollow ipapa -follow ko sa inyo. Pipili lang kayo. Yung traditional is, maghanap kayo ng local related literature. Tapos, international uh, literature. Tapos, local studies, international studies. Okay, yung chronological naman, mas madali ito kasi from oldest to most recent. So, ibig sabihin, kasi um, we agreed on 2011 to 2021. So, 20, 2011, yung mga oldest na mga related literature and studies um, nasa beginning, tapos moving forward, pa-recent ng pa-recent yung mga relate or yung mga RRLS. Okay? So, example. Okay. So, an extensive review of related review of the literature on gender and technology use 
reported. So, ganyan. Ay, ito. Pag literature, talking about the topic lang. No? Talking about the topic. So, ayan. Meron siyang mga nakuha dyan. Talks about cafe users. No? Talks about um, technology. No? Literature lang yan. Literature. So, ewan ko parang hindi siya naka-chronological order. At hindi rin siya naka-traditional order. No? Kasi 2018 tapos 2013. So, take note of your citation pala ha. So, example, this one. Study of Mustafa and Islam. So, yung naka-parenthesis is yung year lang. Kaya tawag itong in-text citation. No? So, parang parang smooth lang yung flow ng ano, smooth lang yung flow ng pag-cite nyo. Hmm. Tapos, ito naman. Oh, another type of, of citation is nilagay mo yung statement tapos nasa huli yung pangalan I mean yung last name nang nagsabi nung statement tapos yung year so ganyan take note lang of those following um, types of citation o paano mag cite so yan yung mga liter literature niya ayan so talking about ano naman to average per week na paggamit ng technology okay so ganyan so magsasan lang ako ng example ay okay, magsasan ako ng copy nitong powerpoint presentation alright moving on to related studies so tapos na tayo sa literature ngayon naman is sa studies so review na naman yung related studies ay mga established or published research published um, studies and published thesis na similar sa current na research mo. So, hindi siya nagtotok sa topic, nagtotok siya sa relation niya sa current na ginagawa mo ngayon. So, hindi lang siya, example, yung online gaming and academic performance, hindi lang siya nagtotok sa online gaming. No? Kung hindi nagtotok talaga siya sa online gaming and academic performance and you'll be surprised ang dami na palang mga studies na ginawa um, locally and internationally patungkol or related sa mga ginagawa nyo ngayon so hindi yan, hindi kayo mahihirapan especially may google scholar naman na paghahanapan nyo so paano ba i-present ang related studies most of the time, ito yung technique na ginagamit ko pag related studies ilalagay mo sa related studies ay yung mga results ng mga studies na related sa current study mo. Again, yung results. No? Yung results. So, example, this one. In the study of Ringola Bonifacio, it has been shown. So, shown that the purpose of the users vary. Overall respondents, so ganyan. So, the average span per visit, 5 to 6 times a week, and everyday users was at least 19% point seventy five hours a week so y ito na yung mga results no? and yan so basahin nyo lang yan okay alright so magsasend talaga ako ng soft copy nitong ano natin okay so paano ba gawin yung review of related literature and study simple na simple open mo na naman yung google tapos pwede kang dito sa google sa google lang Okay, tapos articles on online gaming. Alright, simple na simple lang. Maghahanap ka ng mga articles dyan. Online gaming, the risk. So, ayan. Okay, open mo yan. Uh, magba magbabasa ka lang talaga. Magbabasa. Tapos, don't forget na pag ginamit mo to, meron mo itong references dito. So, Ah, hindi siya hindi siya nalagyan ng references. So, pwede kang maghanap ng mga related literature dyan. Tapos, yung studies, studies kasi established or published na to, hahanapin mo talaga to dito sa, ano, dito sa online gaming and academic performance. So, may, meron yun, no? Academic performance. Dito mo talaga hanapin sa Google Scholar or meron din tayong tinatawag na Science Direct. No? Pwede mo rin hanapin dito sa sciencedirect.com So, online gaming and academic performance 
Ayun. So ito yung mga ito yung mga ano, ito yung mga research na related sa current research mo para to sa studies. So ganito po dito ma-open. Pag na-open mo to na download mo to. Wait lang. Bakit parang ang bagal mag-download? Alright, so ito, naka-download na. Hanapin natin. Okay, naka-open. Ayan. So, internet addiction among young people in China. Online gaming and academic performance. Ayan. So, hanapin mo yung... Saan ba yung ano dito? Ang grabe ng research na to. Uh, mag-scan ka lang, mag-scan. Ah, uh, asan ba 'yon? Basta hanapin mo ha. <laughs> hanapin niyo lang dito. Grabe 'yo. Oh. Sana maging ganyan din tayo ka ayos mag-research. So, I want ko, saan ba 'yung ano dito? Basta hanapin niyo lang 'yung results na pwede niyo magamit as your related studies. Okay? So, ganyan lang. Marami 'yan, marami. So, don't forget na Again, pag related literature, pwede mo lang hanapin sa Google. Don't forget to get the bibliography, yung yun bang ano, yung reference. Tapos pag sinabi mo related studies dito talaga siya sa scholar at saka sa science direct sa meron. Impact of esports and online video gaming on lifestyle behavior. So mga related yan ng mga studies. Equity and game theory strategies to promote Ayan, pag studies dito talaga sa mga scholarly na mga websites. Okay. And don't forget to cite and reference. No, ito yung itong ano na to, at APA format yung ginagamit natin. Okay. Okay. So ayan yung related literature and studies. So again, maghahanap ka ng mga oh, Ito pala yung importante pala din Is hindi lang Lahat ng related literature and studies mo Is international Dapat maglagay ka din ng Local or, your Filip, or, or yung mga Philippine based So yung mga gina, ginawa ng mga Filipino researchers Andun yun lang din naman yan sa ano Dito lang oh, The example ito, Polytechnic University So mga gamit mo na to. Uh, ayan So again Sa RRLS natin Is at least 15 Okay At least 15 Mas more tayo sa studies Kaysa sa literature Okay moving on Last part is yung Oh hindi pa pala May conceptual framework pa pala Okay so what is conceptual framework So dito naman It explains the flow of your study using a diagram, yung mga figures, or otherwise known as research paradigm or research model. So, gagam gagamit kayo ng mga ganito, yung mga, ano ito, yung mga diagram, yung mga shape-shapes. <laughs> okay, so most common research paradigms na ginagamit is, first is IVDV model, ibig sabihin independent variable, independent variable model. Ginagamit to, especially in experiment-based studies. So, I think may isang like, experiment-based study. Uh, experiment yung, um, yung pre-post nila na title. I'm very excited for that. So, pwede mong gamitin tong IVDV model. Okay. Pangalawang type is the IPO or Input Process Output. No? It's um, used to isolate the factor of major variables that causes the problem. Or phenomenon under investigation. So, may example tayo niyan later. At saka yung predictor criterion model used when relating or assessing. Pag in mo naman ang influence ng dalawa or more variables sa isang variable. Okay? So, example lang IPO. So, sa IPO, very simple lang. Pwede nyo itong gamitin yung IPO. Is, ilagay mo sa input. Ano ba itong nasa input? Yung Um, research questions no? Research questions Pero yung format niya hindi na research question na What is the level of knowledge ano? Ilalagay mo yung 
statement, no? Statement format na siya. So instead of sabihin niyo na what is the level of knowledge and skills among TLA teachers, so gagamitin mo na yung the level of knowledge so hindi na siya naka-question format. So sa process is gathering data. Ayan, ano ba yung igagather mo na mga data? Paano mo igagather yung mga data? Tapos statistical treatment, so simple percentage of course gagamitin 'yan. So yung weighted mean naman at saka Pwede mo ring ma-update tong process pag natapos ka na sa treatment of data mo. So, yan lang muna yung simple percentage. Of course, gagamitin yan. Yung weighted mean naman, gagamitin din yan. Tapos, leave blank lang kung ano pa yung statistical treatment na gagamitin. Tapos, yung output, ginawa dito is action plan. Yung output natin, hindi naman natin gagawin, gagawa ng action yung research natin is ano lang, summary and findings tapos recommendation no so yun yung ang ilalagay sa output so mas simple to siya okay tapos sa theoretical framework naman pwede kayong gumawa ng sarili niyo example this one okay so gumawa siya ng sarili niyang conceptual framework no gamit yung dalawang theory na ginamit niya kang Fetchner at kang Zadjong tapos ito yung um, variable niya independent variable at ito yung dependent variable niya tapos i-compare at correlate niya tapos naglabas ng results at nakapagbigay siya ng conclusions and recommendations simple lang din to right ito rin simple lang din ito din ay very simple lang pag naka-experiment based studies ka yung yun bang chine-change mo yung independent variable So most of you ano cor correlational studies naman kayo. So pwede niyo gamitin yung IPO, pwede din tong pwede kayong gumawa ng sarili ninyong framework. So ayan. So may nahanap ako sa internet tapos parang ang labo niya. Papakita ko lang dito na ang oh, ginamit niya is IVDV na no, peer tutoring, peer tutor tutor tutoring and reading fluency. So IV niya, Independent Peer Tutoring. So, ito yung experiment niya kasi magpi-peer tutor siya. Tapos, hahanapin niya yung fluency ng reading after peer tutoring. So, para siyang experiment. Okay. Tapos, pala ng conceptual framework. Magyan yun ng figure 1 conceptual framework. Tapos, i-explain niyo yung conceptual framework niyo. Okay? Explain niyo. Simple lang. Ano yung mga nandyan? Ano yung mga variables? Okay. Ganyan. Okay. Explain nyo lang yung conceptual framework. At yun na ang conceptual framework. Very simple. Again, yung conceptual framework is the flow of your study. Oh, you use a diagram. Tapos, you explain the diagram. Okay. Moving on to hypothesis. And this is the last for this requirement. So, a, hip a, a hypothesis is an educated guess, a predicted answer, an intelligent guess on the relationship between variables. So, most of the time, ang hypothesis ay ginagamit lamang sa experimental quantitative. No? Walang hypothesis sa qualitative most of the time. Ginagamit lamang ito sa um, experimental or quantitative. So, most of the time din, ginagamit natin sa quantitative research is yung null hypothesis at yung alternative hypothesis. So, yung null hypothesis is always expressed in negative form using not or no or known as H0. Okay, ang null hypothesis is H0. Tapos, yung alternative hypothesis is alternate to null hypothesis known as the H1. So, again, yung hypothesis is yung yun bang na ba yun sa Tagalog? So, yung prediction, no? Yung prediction yun na ano ba talaga may relationship ba yung yung online gaming at saka academic performance? So, gagamitin natin null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So, may example ako dito. So, hypothesis. So, dalawa kasi, no? ES, hindi na IS kasi plural na. Kasi gumamit siya ng null at saka yung alternate. The following hypothesis Hypothes, hypothesis and that you know, were tested 
using the point zero five level of significance. Ito yung hindi nyo dapat galawin tong point zero five point zero five na number kasi ito yung standard no na paghanap ng level of significance in order to answer the problem of the study. So ang mali dito is yung null hypothesis is H0 lang. No? Ginamit nito H01. So H0, null hypothesis, gagamit ng not or no. So there is no significant relationship between amount of time spent in internet cafe and students' academic performance. H0, yung null hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis, H1. No, H1, alternate hypothesis, there is... So, no, tapos there is a significant relationship between amount of time spent in internet cafe and students' academic performance. Yung dalawa, most of the time in quantitative experimental research, dalawa yung gagamitin mong hypothesis, yung null, at yung alternate hypothesis. At yun, very very simple lang. Ito yung mauni pinakasimple sa inyong buhaton karon <laughs> so anyway so we are done with all the discussions you can ask me on your GC or personally PM me or you can search for more ang dami dami ng mga YouTubers na gumagawa ng mga content related dito sa paggawa ng research paper so pwede kayo maghanap ng that madaming hypothesis ah, madaming hypothesis madaming references okay so kailan ba isa submit yung output nyo today is 27 so i will expect your output by sunday october 31 kalag kalag mali na ano kalag kalag mga lag na mua ng 31 ko an lang taari lang ta sa 2 okay Two siguro. Oh, okay. Para di naman disturbo yung one. So, okay. Two? One week? Okay. So, two. November two. Okay. November two at twelve in the koan. Twelve noon. Okay. November two, twelve noon. Isa submit yung first draft new ng theoretical background. Review of related literature and studies, conceptual framework, at saka yung hypothesis. Again, review of or yung RRLS nyo, at least 15. Mas maganda kung 20, pero kung kakayanin yung 15 to 20. Ayun. Mas maganda talaga kung 20. Alright, so that's it. Alright, so good luck on this um, requirement. And... Stay safe. Bye-bye.